have a great contingent of our men and women in blue joining us today. And we want to say, first of all, thank you so much to the New York Police Department for always working so hard to keep us all safe. Thank you so much, the NYPD. So that brings me to our first honoree for this evening, Captain Pratima Puller Maldonado, who is a pioneer in her field. She began her career in 2009, serving various precincts throughout the city. But it's truly an honor that today she serves at the 102, where she grew up as a young kid. Um, Captain uh, Puller Maldonado became the first Sikh female to serve in the NYPD, first as a sergeant, then lieutenant. And just last year, in 2023, she became the first Sikh female to become captain. Put your hands together for Captain Puller Maldonado. So today, we're joining you from the 102 precinct of the NYPD, and it's my great honor to introduce to you a Punjabi kuri, one of our very own, Captain Pratima B. Maldonado. First of all, Captain, thank you so much for taking the time, and welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you. Captain, the fact that you are not just a Sikh American woman, a woman of South Asian descent, but that you are a captain in the NYPD, uh, the world's premier police department, certainly the largest police force in the country. Yes. How does that feel? Oh, I feel proud. I feel very proud. Ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, captain, you know, pride is a feeling sometimes that we feel in the moment, but the hard work that must have taken place for you to get to this position, that's a lifelong endeavor. And today I'm going to ask you some questions so we can learn about that journey. Before we get to your role in the police department, I'd like to know a little bit about your background. Can you tell us you know, where you were born, where you grew up? I was born in Amritsar, Punjab. <clears throat> I came to this country when I was like nine years old. Uh, we actually lived here in the 102 in Richmond Hill. I grew up here. I went to school here. I played with my friends here. Like, we were, we just lived here for the, re like, what, more than 25 years? Wow. Yeah. So you are as local as local gets. And to, you know, start from living here, from building your life here, to today you are the captain of the 102. Um, what an incredible journey. You know, when we talk about prior to the academy, your educational pursuits, what interested you in school? What kind of an educational um, track did you take? I went to Richmond Hill High School, and then I did my forensic psychology from John Jay College. And then I broke the news to my family that I wanted to be a police officer. Oh, well, you know, in an Indian household, that was obviously a little disappointment because they're like, my dad was like, at least be a nurse, you know, why not? I'm like, no, I want to be law enforcement because my grandfather was, um, he was um, in the army in India. He passed away before I was born, but I always heard stories about him. So I always wanted to be like him. I wanted to serve. Captain Maldonado, you know, if you don't mind me asking, growing up in an Indian household, in a Punjabi household, did you ever feel that because you were a woman that maybe it created concern in your family that you wanted to go into law enforcement? Usually it would because I do have family, extended family, that where they protect the women. They want them to be, be a doctor. You go, you go to work, you come home, you be with the kids. But my mom, she, when she came here, she was 27, I think, and she wanted to be a cop. She's like, well, I couldn't be a cop. You better be a cop. So she was all for it. My dad's like, are you crazy? She needs to be a doctor. I'm like, no. My mom said, okay. So we never had that problem. My mom was always supported. She always supported me when I wanted to go to the academy, everything. She's been with me throughout. That is so amazing, and certainly it's a source of inspiration for so many mothers thinking about their daughters and the futures that they might delve into um, to receive that kind of support from your mom, that kind of encouragement. Um, so you're in school, you went to John Jay. Was there any particular moment in your educational path that you said law enforcement is the, the step for me, that something particularly that took place that said, yes, I want to go into the police force? Well, 
that idea has been with me since I was like 11, 12 years old. I saw, I think I, they were one or two police officers when I was a kid. I can't tell, but since I lived here, it was the one or two, but they were always helpful. You needed something. We had to call the cops because my dad wasn't feeling good. The way they responded and like, you know, helped us out. It was just, I was in love. I was like, this is what I want to be. I want to be able to help people. And that I just wanted to be a cop. <laughs> Captain, what did the police force, especially in this neighborhood, look like back then when you were a kid growing up here? <laughs> um, predominantly white, uh, maybe Hispanic, but there was no one like me. Wow. I, I mean, it's safe to say that, at least across the country, there's probably still very few captains that look like you. And so once again, we're so proud of where you've reached. Uh, you know, when we talk about your entry into the academy, right? Um, women, by default, uh, we are honored to have the role of being a homemaker, a mother, in addition to our professional pursuits. How did your personal life coincide with those early years when you were first joining the academy? Well, <clears throat> I was going to join in 2006, but then things happened and I couldn't. I was like, I'm not going to do it yet. Then I got married. I had my son who was only two months old wow. when I decided that it's time. I'm going to, because I don't want to just sit home and be a mother. I wanted to be a mother, but I wanted to have a career. Of course. And that's when I joined the NYPD. I actually went into the academy with my son only being two years old, I mean, two months old. Wow. He wasn't even a year old when I graduated. He was like nine months. Wow. Can you speak to some of the emotional challenges you encountered in those days? Um, for better or for worse, having a, a young baby at home, but also pushing yourself physically to pass what is a very grueling and intensive physical exam to join the academy yeah it, it was hard especially um you know the running at, you, you're recovering the doctors don't want you doing that yet but once they gave me the uh, green light even the instructors at the academy were like you're pushing yourself too much maybe just slow down what about the next i'm like no the doctor said i could do it so i'm going to do it because that's something and my test was going to expire so i did not want to wait another year or two years I was like, no, I, I think I could do it, and I pushed through. And how was it from your family, your support system in those days? How did they encourage you or, or support you? Well, I couldn't have done it without the family because my mom would keep the baby when I had to go to extra uh, gym classes. She would. I knew that my kid was in good hands when my mom was home with him. I could study. I could um, go to the park and run. I, she was, she was just there, and I knew that my baby is in good hands. Wow. Um, you know, once again, we're blessed if we have the support of family when we do these kind of, um, you know, uh, endeavors in life. And certainly, look at where you are now. Uh, so big, once again, kudos to your family, your mom for being there for you. Really goes to show what an impact that family yes. support can make. Um, Captain Maldonado, I have some questions about where you are today, how you got here, because Entering the academy to then becoming captain of the 102, um, certainly there's a lot of um, you know interesting things you can share about that journey to bring back in the program from NYPD's 102 precinct right here in Richmond Hill, Queens. Captain Pratima B. Maldonado. Captain Maldonado, what a story you've been sharing with us, um, the emotional journey, the physical um, you know achievement of becoming a captain of, you know, surviving the academy's very grueling physical entrance, as well as being a mother, as well as being a daughter and a member of the 102 community right here in Richmond Hill. You know, it was great learning about some of your early years, your education and how law enforcement was something that you always saw yourself being a part of. Um, for a woman, that's extremely rare, even more so within the Punjabi Indian community. 
But certainly, um, women like you are paving the path for others to follow. So we thank you for that. Captain Maldonado, once you were through the academy, you were part of the force, um, you know, I, I want to highlight here for individuals that may not know, you know, what the hierarchy looks like, police officer uh, to sergeant to lieutenant to today captain. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looked like for you through the years, going through those different ranks? What did you have to do professionally? What sacrifice did you have to make to be able to climb those ranks and get to captain today? Well, I was a cop in the Bronx for many years, then the 115. And then when the sergeant's test came out, I studied for straight six months while my mom again helped me out. My husband too, they were there for me so I could study. Uh, then as a sergeant, I was in um, the 5 precinct in the Bronx. Um, then as a lieutenant, I went to the 4-2. Uh, and I lived in the 102 all while I was doing, going all over the place. And then I move upstate and become a captain, they send me back to the 102 as a captain. <laughs> so, well, as a sergeant, I remember uh, there was this female who was like 16, 17 years old. She was intoxicated and she wanted to kill herself. She was on a bridge um, on the overpass on a highway and we were trying to just hold on to her. I was holding on to her belt loop, hoping to God that I don't let go because ESU was going to go to the other side and grab her. I don't know what was going on with her, but I'm glad that we were able to bring her out and put her in a ambulance so she could go to the hospital because maybe it was, I don't know what she was going through, but I'm glad that we were there to just bring her out and send her to the hospital. Get her the help she yes. so desperately needed. Captain, I'm so glad you brought this up because sometimes when people think of the police, especially the NYPD, which is so um, magnified in the media and in public um, opinion, you know, people just think of addressing crime. But this story highlights, and I'd love to hear if you have any other more stories like this of how you're not just dealing with crime to keep communities safe, but you're actually helping the community with so many other things. Yes, um, I think that was more highlighted, not highlighted, but I feel like made more difference when I became a captain and I was in the 102, because there are people here that <clears throat> have language barriers. There are people here that if they're trying to say something, it's not really what they mean because of the uh, language. So I had this 72-year-old female who was going to get arrested because she had an argument with someone and she's crying. She's trying to explain in broken English to the cops that what's going on. So I feel like, you know, I got there and I spoke to her in Punjabi and she, her face just lit up. Wow. She started crying. She hugged me. She's like, oh my God, thank you because I understood what she was trying to say. And it was just, it was just an argument. Wow. She didn't hit the other person. She she didn't have to get arrested. And when she was going to get arrested, they had to take her um journey, the bail. Right, right. And she was more worried about that because she, she didn't want to give that up. And they're thinking, oh, no, she can't have it. I'm like, no, give it back to her. She doesn't need to get arrested. Right. She didn't do anything wrong. But just the fact that I was able to understand her, she she was just so happy. Captain, you're perfectly leading into my next question, which is, you know, when you were a kid growing up in these parts and you saw those officers, which inspired you so much, but, you know, the reality was they didn't look like you, you know, maybe they weren't um, a lot of females on the beat and they certainly weren't brown South Asian females um, or South Asian faces, period. Fo fast forward to today. Um, what kind of a difference does it make, especially in a community like the 102, Richmond Hill specifically, um, which I'd love to get your uh, you know, thoughts on the makeup of this community, when the officers policing it look like the people that live here? Well, they feel connected. They feel like their voices are heard because you could talk to them in a different language. You can understand what's going on. The cultural differences, like if I know the culture, 
they're going to, oh, so you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes. So if someone has the sword because kirpan. of the kirpan, yeah. right. it's not a weapon. It's not an automatic weapon. It's, right. a, it's an article of faith. So right. they're allowed to carry it. So a lot of small little things help when you are someone that knows where the other person's coming from. Right. And is it true that Richmond Hill has, um, you know, one of the largest Sikh American populations yes. uh, in the NYPD? Yes, yes. Wow. Richmond Hill is the hub of, Pun it's a little Punjab. Right. I mean, certainly if you look at the, the streets, the people walking, the stores and our Gurdwaras, um, that's evident. But certainly the, the police force sees the community at a much deeper level. Um, is there anything that you can share about how special it is to be captain of the 102? You kind of walked us through your journey all over New York, even upstate in the Bronx and Brooklyn. But when you became captain to end up back in the 102, what was that like? It was like coming home. It was, it was great. I love it here. I, um, I see the people. These are the people that actually made me the way I am today. I grew up here. I went to school here. I have the uh, culture, the, the history. It's all from here. So going to the same Gurdwara, the 118 Gurdwara, my dad used to take me there when I was a little girl. So now I go there as a captain and people, you know, it's, I still have that connection because I know it from childhood. Captain, you know, we've talked a lot about your family support, your parents, your mom specifically, your husband, um, throughout your journey uh, and your accomplishments within the police department, rising through the ranks, becoming a captain. Can you tell us a little bit about the support you got from within the department itself? Because, you know, people may have maybe misconstrued notions about what law enforcement, what police departments are like. But if we're talking specifically about the NYPD, what kind of support and encouragement have you received internally so you could get to captain? Well, NYPD as whole has always been supportive. Um, taking the test, giving you the time to study, going to classes, um, exceptional bosses. Like um, I've had great supervisors who've helped me out, who've told me, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. I've never felt like just because I am an Indian woman in the department that I was treated different or I was um, not treated the same. It's always been positive with the NYPD, and that's one thing I love about this department. It's like you work hard, and you're going to get what you want. Wow. And, and you know, that message, um, I'm sure, resonates not just within the police department, but for women across the board, right? Um, speaking of messages specifically for women aspiring to go into careers, whether it's law enforcement or other careers where people are like, no, woman doesn't belong in this field. Even today, what message do you have for them, for women listening to us nationwide, um, especially for younger women that are maybe at that point in their lives that they're getting their education and they're debating what they should do next? Do it. Just, you know, no one's going to hand anything to you. No one's going to give you anything for free. You have to put your hard work in. You have to know what you want and just go for it. And especially in America, you work hard, you put your time and effort into it, you'll, you'll get what you want. Do you think uh, today you can confidently say, and, and I have a feeling I know what your answer is going to be, but still, I have to ask this. Do you think today you can say that the NYPD is a great place for young women, young women of black and brown backgrounds to join? NYPD is the best place to be because they, you will be helped. You will be given the guidance you need. No one's going to try to stop you. Look at my first step. She's a proud Guyanese and black. The first one. That's amazing. And you have a young Punjabi uh, newly graduated into the academy as well. We yes. interviewed her recently. Yes, yes. She's here. She's my uh, FTU. She's, a field training. She's in the field training unit for a few months. She's still learning and she's great. I love her. 
That's amazing. Well, once again, Captain Maldonado, it was such a pleasure connecting with you today. And um, we are certain that the community right here in Richmond Hill is better off because you're the captain of the 102. So thank you again for taking some time with us today. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.